And we can actually do this in a new branch. So from the current branch, we're going to create a new branch called feature slash provisioners, and we're going to switch to that branch. And we're in this new branch provisioners. And now we can add all the code in here. So as I said, there is an alternative to executing the commands or a script on a remote server using a provisioner called remote exec. So remote exec is basically a provisioner that allows us to connect to the remote server and execute commands on that server, right? And the way we can define commands here is using inline, which basically lets us define a list of commands to be executed on a remote server. For example, we can export variables here. We could say environment dev, doesn't really matter. And we can have a bunch of different commands here. We can also create a directory or even install some programs, right? So basically any command that you want to execute, you can do it using a remote exec provisioner. And with inline attribute, you can list all the commands like this, right? So all of these will be executed on the AWS instance that is going to be created. Now, whenever we define a remote exec provisioner, we actually have to tell Terraform how to connect to that remote server. And even though we are in this AW instance resource inside, it doesn't actually by default connect to that server. So we need to define the connection explicitly to connect to this remote server. And we can do that using connection attribute for provisioner. This is specific to provisioner, by the way, it actually belongs to it. And in the connection, we have the type. We have two types of connection. We have SSH and WinRM, the default actually being the SSH type. And then we have the host. So we basically have to tell Terraform the remote server address. And since we are inside the AWS instance, and this is the server we are connecting to, we can actually use something called self. And self is like, you know, in programming languages, you have this to refer to the current context. In our case, self refers to the object or the resource that we are in. And since we are in resource, AWS instance, self will refer to this object right here. And on self, then we can get the public IP attribute like this. And then we need username, which is EC2 user on EC2 instance. And then we have the private key. You can also have password if you're connecting using username and password. Um, but you can also pass in the private key, which you can also do by referring to a file. So we can do private key location, just like we did for public key. And and the private key is ID RSA. Private key. So basically this block here will be able to connect Terraform to the remote server using the SSH connection in order to execute these commands on it. So the difference is that here we're just passing on the data to EC2 or to AWS actually, so that it can execute all these commands there. In our case, we're SSHing into the server and executing the commands there using Terraform. So let's actually try this out. So I'm going to do Terraform plan. And it will show us that everything needs to be created because I have deleted all my resources. And we can now do Terraform apply. So 
So as you see, all these resources got created and here you see the output for the remote exec provisioner. And you see that connection was established right here, connected with all these parameters. And now we can actually SSH into the server. And here, if I do ls, we have a new directory. However, for a more realistic use case, you may want to execute a script on the remote server like we did in here. And there is a script attribute for that. So all of these commands will be executed on a remote server using the remote exec provisioner. However, this basically means that the script called entry script.sh must already exist on the remote server so that we can actually execute it, right? Because again, remember, remote exec means that it actually executes on the remote server, not on our local machine, right? So that means that we would have to copy the file to the remote server first. And for that, there is another provisioner that is called file and file provisioner is basically specifically made for copying files from our local machine to the remote machine, right? To a remote destination. So in order to copy the file, it's very easy. We have source, which is the location and name of the file that we are copying. So this is path on the local machine. This is the source and we have the destination which is the path on the remote machine. And this is, if we do PWD, this is actually the default folder of my user, EC2 user on the EC2 instance. So we can copy it inside and we have to specify the file name that it's gonna be copied into. We can actually name it something else like um, is to whatever and the contents of this file will basically be taken and copied to remote into a file called entry script on ec2.sh and then we would be able to execute that file that gets copied and created on the remote machine remotely right by SSHing into it and then executing the file and know that this connection is shared by both provisioners. So it will be used for executing both of these provisioner steps. So this is how we can copy files from local machine to the remote server. If you wanted to copy files to multiple different servers, actually you can have own connection blocks inside. So let's say we want this file to be copied to um, this instance but we want the same file to be copied to another server as well. And in that case, we can have the connection block inside the provisioner itself. So this will be some, I don't know, some other server and it's public IP address and some other private key, um, etc. So you can do that as well. So we saw two provisioners here, right? We have the remote exec that executes remotely and we have the file provisioner that copies files to the remote from the local source. And there is one more provisioner. So we have three in total that is local exec. And we can write that like this. And local exec is basically commands that will be executed locally. So for example, if you want to execute some commands locally on our laptop, then we can execute them using local exec. So we're going to have a command attribute and we can execute any command like we would um, directly by typing it on our local computer. If you wanted to print out the um, public IP address of this server right here, you could do self 
public IP. And this will basically echo it. We can also save it into a file. And this will get executed locally on our machine. So these are the three provisioners that you have available. And this is the connection block that you need if you're using one of those two in order to connect to the remote server. Now, when you're working with Terraform, there are actually a lot of use cases and scenarios where you would want to execute some stuff remotely on your servers, right? There are things to configure, there are applications and software to be installed and so on.